Right then, welcome back to the channel. I spoke about the eye last night, so if you haven't seen uh, my review, uh, go watch my review. I explain what happened in the review. But let's talk first about Hoyland. Um, it's his eighth goal of the season, which in 20 starts is is solid for a striker of his age. Um, and it's incredible for a striker of his service because the service he gets is an absolute joke he is literally starving the amount of service he gets is a piss take i think he set up more chances on his own for everybody else than the combination of all of the chances everybody else created for him which is an absolute joke in all honesty um the wingers are just completely too selfish um he has to fight two for nail to get a goal and they'll only seem to pass it in when their shooting option has been closed down and, and they'll be like, go on and I'll give it Hoyland. And, and and because of the way Hoyland plays, quite often they get it back. It's so frustrating to watch. And the team dynamics and the personnel that's in there, they're just not set up for Hoyland to succeed. Um, and then, obviously, there's a... Who do you blame for that? Ten Hag has to take some of that, as do the entirety of the coaching staff, including Benny McCarthy and, and uh, Steve McLaren. But I'm sick of these players escaping any sort of criticism when it comes to their performances. You know, you listen to some of the, the top ex-pros that are out there and some of the very best managers, and they'll tell you what to do defensively. They'll, they'll drill things on set plays. They'll maybe work on how we play out the back and potentially through the middle third. And then they will leave the final third very often to instinct, including Pep. Pep puts put, put the ball into this area, and that's about it. He doesn't go beyond that because you can't overcomplicate it and you can't really cater for every single scenario that you're going to face. So you do a lot of practice on there, so you've got chunks of pattern recognition, but when you get to the final third, quite a lot of play is instinctive. So at what point, some of it's definitely the manager still because he can be like, Listen, I'm going to start fucking dropping you if you don't start putting the ball in the mix. Everyone remember that very famous Sir Alex Ferguson um, line. I can't remember who leaked it. Rio's spoken about it on our podcast, so I've, I've heard it there for sure. I feel like someone else might have mentioned it as well. But basically, at some point during the season, Sir Alex Ferguson sat all the players down and said, if you don't find him, you will not play. Which tells you that even the very best that have ever done it in Sir Alex Ferguson, they have to remind the players what to do. So, you know, we had our system of play and we played some bloody good football in 2013. But they still had to sit him down and say, this guy will win you the league. Pass him the ball. Now, I don't think we're at, Rasmus Holland will win us the league if you pass him the ball levels just yet. But he'll certainly not have us in eighth if you pass him the ball. He might actually get us into the top four. It's an absolute joke. The, the little service he is working with, the least past two player in the Premier League. It's fucking embarrassing. Embarrassing. Right, lads, gather around. You have heard me banging on about Manscaped for ages, uh, mainly discussing the virtues of a well-trimmed ball bag. But today we're gonna move a little bit north and something that you might have actually seen, my beard. Manscaped isn't just a master of below the belt grooming. They have conquered beard territory too. And I know this is groundbreaking news. Let's delve into the details. Now, we are all well acquainted with Manscaped's brilliance for the downstairs department. They've been many a savior of many a date night and many a ball bag. And you know the lawnmower 4.0 by now. I'm not going to tell you about any of the features for it because if you don't know them, then you're never going to know them, right? It's a certified hero for the never regions. But they're here for the beards now as well. And they've got the beard hedger. It is a cordless miracle worker that is both tough and gentle. It takes down facial forests in a single stroke. It's got 20 different lengths of settings. It gives you the power to totally customize your beard without cluttering up the bathroom and having a million different attachments. Now, they've also got another member of the band and it's the Handyman. That is a dual-sided foil razor that has got your back, whether it's your face, whether you're going clean shaven or just tidying up 
up a little bit around the neck. It is the epitome of comfort in the shaving world and it's got a seamless and nick free experience. So listen, if you want to give your beard the VIP treatment that it absolutely deserves, get over to manscaped.com, use a special code HOUSEN, you're going to get 20% off and free shipping. And while you're grooming the jewels, let's not neglect the crown. With Manscaped, who said beauty had to be a pain? Let's keep it neat and tidy, top to bottom. Uh, and in tied with that, the wing play. Anthony gets a goal and assist for an £80 million pound winger playing against League Two. I should fucking think so. It was a nothing performance from him despite the goal and the assist. He's so predictable. There is zero variation in his game. The best he looked was the, the, the seconds that he played on the left-hand side when he actually got an assist. There's no dynamism. Everything's a little bit too slow, a little bit deliberate, a little bit too obvious. His decision-making shit. I never see him look for Hoyland. And then on the other wing, you've got Garnacho, who's just seemingly on this one-man mission to score any time he gets it. And the annoying thing is Garnacho gets into incredible positions where Hoyland is steaming at the front post, getting a, doing his fucking job at getting across the front, ma- the front post and the front man. And they don't find him and they don't put the ball into him. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And I, and I know loads of people are going to be like, oh, do you know what? We, we're through. We won. All week, all I've been talking about is I want to see a good performance in this game because we should win. We should win what was texting in our other hand. And yes, we scored four goals. But I'll be honest. When it was 2-1, I felt it was inevitable they were going to score. And at 2-2, I wasn't certain we was going to get the third. There was a lot of relief when that third went in. And the fourth came in injury time and, you know, finally got the game put to bed. But it was not a good performance. Out 20 minutes we had. We had 20 minutes of genuinely top form. And so I'm like, oh, patterns and fucking movement. And I'm getting very excited. And if the game would have continued in the vein that it did for the first 20 minutes, I'd have been coming on here looking like a right tit, more of a tit, because I obviously look a tit, don't I? But I'd have been coming on here looking even more of a tit than I, than I usually do by going on about how good we are. And all of these comments would be like, fuck me, Steve, calm down. It was only Newport. But only Newport put the fucking frighteners up us. Not good enough. Martinez. Class. He showed his class on the ball today. There was a couple of times when he got the ball under pressure, spun, turned. One of the most technically secure, press-resistant centre-backs in the world. And he, at times, made it look easy. He gives us a totally different dynamic in the build-up. And I thought, you know, him, Luke Shaw, give him some flowers today as well. They really helped us in that first phase of play. They took the ball so often, so calm, so composed, so technical. Um... There's still some gears for both of them to go through in terms of match fitness, but we're going to need him. And I think as he starts to to get back up to speed, uh, United will start looking like a much more formidable team. Bay and Deer. Um, steady. A couple of shaky moments, I would say, in possession. Just a little bit on terms of the timing. Um, but... Yeah, steady, I would say. Distribution was pretty decent overall. He's obviously comfortable holding on to the ball. Gets his foot on it, gets his head up. Happy to invite people to come on to him. Um, did concede two, but I wouldn't really put him at fault for either of those. Um, Onana's obviously going to ter- return. I don't think he's shown enough necessarily to challenge. Um, although Onana's had a horrendous AFCON. I know he retired from international football, then we signed him and he unretired and... Wouldn't be surprised to see Onana re-retire because I believe he saved a grand total of zero shots against him. Which is some fucking start, isn't it? Number five. Ten Hag needs this cup. It's the only competition that we have any sort of hope for doing anything in. Or, and the sad thing is... I mean, I'd love a day out at Wembley. I just don't see us winning it. I think there's a good chance um, the club probably requires Champions League more than it requires an FA Cup. You know, we won a trophy last season. Okay, it's a step down from the FA Cup, but I think with the situation around the club at the moment, Champions League is the must. 
either way, we have to take the FA Cup serious. It's been an absolute nightmare of a season and a cup run, <laughs> a la Fergie 1990, could keep him in the hot seat. Um, it, and it could keep Ineos from having wondering eyes as they look to sort of rebuild the club because I get the impression they're going to be ruthless and I assume that includes with the manager. Um, I think every game matters. Every single game matters um, from now till the end of the season. And United can't afford to rotate, take our foot off the gas or anything once. I will talk about Marcus Rashford, but I'll probably do it as a standalone video. I'm very disappointed in him. Um, but we'll save that for another day. Um, and like I said, if you want to know what happened at the eye, I'll post a link to the video down here. It's over on Patreon. There's quite a lot coming out on Patreon soon as well. Um, so you won't just be signing up, just go and see him what happened to my eye but um there's all sorts coming out on there very soon as well it's got its own dedicated producer now so hopefully we can make a, a bit of a run at that channel with all sorts going on but thank you guys as always for tuning in please give us your thoughts on how you thought the game went yesterday and, and the points that i've just made there does eric ten Hag need a cup run does champions league matter more how do you think it's got a shake out but uh i'll see you in the next one laters Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.